Everybody's wrong about the Apple Studio display, including me. I made a video titled, Buy This Instead of the Apple Studio Display. I was showcasing the LG 5K Ultra Wide Monitor. And actually, quick side note, that monitor is sent in for service. The Thunderbolt port on the back snapped off. I was putting it up and then it was my mistake. I decided to boot up the Apple Studio Display. And this is one of those products where you gotta use it to understand it. And Apple is good for that. Look back at the iPhone 10. People clown the notch. People clown the AirPods, the way how they look. They take a design, people talk smack about it until you actually use it. Add the Apple Studio Display to that list. I was wrong. <laughs> now I'm not a fan of talking specifications to you guys, but since this is a review video, it's appropriate to. This is a 5K 27 inch retina display. This has a resolution of 5120 by 2880, 600 nits of brightness. Now, I did say that, oh, you know, this, who wants a screen that bright? So if you're in a scenario where you're by the window and you have the studio display here, you can increase the brightness so it's not as much glare on the screen. I never had a professional studio display, hence the name. So having something that's so color accurate is very important for videographers and photographers and having something that's so sharp and clear and bright, it makes a lot of sense. Using it that one night, I was watching a video, the sound quality blew me away and I was like, yo, it's coming out of this? It's coming out of this monitor? Because as you know, monitors tend to not have as much good sound and even on the tv side you're just almost certain that you need to buy speakers for that monitor but in this case here you don't need any kind of speakers the trouble is good the bass i was blown away by the bass you know what instead of me describing it take a listen sleep on that sound quality man yeah and even like the imax right even the m1 imac or i even have the imac pro it don't sound this good this is the best sounding monitor that i ever heard in my life the microphone quality is solid but nothing is touching my sm7b i have my sm7b right here this is an xlr mic is it pales in comparison but it, this is a microphone test and video test of the apple studio display this is without the center stage enabled, and I apologize for the mess in the background. I'm working on another video as we speak. Let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. I'm in front of the window, get a natural light, and it is kind of fuzzy. Not even gonna lie. But it's still adequate for basic FaceTime calls. And yes, you have uh, center stage, and the quality of the webcam kind of disappointed me. I mean, it's fuzzy, it lacks the clarity, it's not that good, and I'm kind of disappointed and i don't care what nobody say the ipad is the best facetime device you can carry it around you can put it down anywhere and even have center stage to top that off and the actual quality of the camera is way better instead i use this screen bar from bank and it lights up the keyboard to this day i dislike the fact how apple limit the selections like this you should be able to just buy this display and be able to change it into a visa mount, have a, a tilt. It should have been the tilt adjustable height, but you got to choose and you got to choose wisely because you cannot switch it out later on. So in this case, I have the standard configuration and I'm just stuck with it. Can't adjust the height, nothing. Get the visa mount option because you can put it on the visa mount. You can adjust the height. You can tilt it. You have more flexibility. I know the engineering team at Apple could have thought of an idea to have a universal fit or a universal mount. And in terms of the connection, you only have Thunderbolt and Type-C ports. So in this case, I use my studio display to hook up my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. And you're already using the Thunderbolt. So it's nice to have other Type-C inputs to connect external devices or your peripherals, whatever you like. Although it would have been nice to see an HDMI port or uh, maybe an ethernet, <laughs> come on Apple, give us the ethernet port, <laughs> come on. That's why you have dongles, right? The dongle life is real. Like don't get it twisted, this is still one of the weirdest Apple products. You have 64 gigabytes of onboard storage, but you cannot use it. You have the A13 Bionic chip to power the, 
the center stage, the microphone. You even have more components going on on the Apple Studio display than the M1 iMac, which is bizarre. But the whole screen is full of components. Power port is integrated with the display. You can't take it out. It's just weird, all around weirdness going on with this display, but I still love it. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. The bezels are pretty thick for what it is. It could have been a little bit thinner. We gotta go back to reason why I even kept this in the first place. The color accuracy, the Apple ecosystem. I love the fact how you can control the brightness on your keyboard. Something simple as that, you could do. You're changing the brightness right here. I'm changing it right now on my keyboard. And then to top that off, you have True Tone. True Tone is one of the most underrated features. Um, when I'm video editing, I turn that right off because I need the color accuracy. And it goes without saying, this is one of the most beautiful external displays on the market right now. All aluminum finish, glass front. You do have the nano texture option. I don't recommend that. I, I watched a video where the text could look fuzzy sometimes. So I didn't even waste my time with that. And this is just taking inspiration from the Pro XDR display. I always wanted that. It looks sick, it looks badass with the, all the holes on the back. Excuse my French. This is just the little brother, it's cheaper, but it, it features the same design language, which I appreciate. And on my room tour video, somebody requests me to get the Pro XDR display. <laughs> but now I had that Pro XDR display look without spending the Pro XDR display price. And going over some cons, you miss an HDR. I don't care about HDR, guys. I don't shoot an HDR. I don't watch HDR video. I mean, eh, I do watch HDR movies and play HDR games, but me as a creator, I don't shoot HDR. Um, you lack in ProMotion, which, yes, it would have been cool to get ProMotion, especially at this expensive price tag. But you know what I noticed? Using the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPad Pro, that ProMotion is buttery smooth when you're touching the screen, but on the Mac, it's a different kind of experience. You're not gonna really feel it as much as like an iPad or an iPhone, but, and even like local dimming, you're missing that. Answering the $1 million question, should you go out and buy the studio display? And this is honestly a tricky question to answer because you could get a 4K monitor you know, way cheaper than this and, and get a larger canvas and something to, you know, have the similar experience. But with the studio display, everything is just intertwined with each other. The brightness, the um, true tone, the 5K display, the speakers, the design, all that stuff, you gotta take into consideration. But if you just started out, you just brought a MacBook, you spend a lot of money on that MacBook or even the Mac Studio, you don't wanna spend another 2,000 on the studio display. I understand, but me, I'm just going all out. I'm just going all out. We got the studio display, we got the MacBook, everything matches. That's just my style. And listen, I was gonna return it. You know, I got green eyes for a second. I wanted to get the money back on my card, but you know what? I said, I'm gonna keep this, I like this. And I can see this monitor fitting with the desk setup in future videos. So it's like yes and no, maybe. It depends if you have the money for it. You're gonna love it, but you could get something that's similar, well, something that's close to it. And let's say you do have the money for it, you want one. The inventory, the stock, the availability is a little sus. If you order it right now through apple.com, you're getting it August 3rd. Guys, we not even in June yet. We not even in July. They talking about August, eight to 10 weeks. Sometimes Best Buy have them in stock, but it's a little hit or miss. Just finding these displays is a pain in the neck. And then you're gonna spend more money if you go through eBay. So even if you want one, you still gonna have to do some digging. You have to scope this one out, check other retailers because the availability, it's rough. And unfortunately, I did return my Mac Studio. I just didn't see the need of it, especially having the MacBook Pro M1 Max one. They both perform exactly the same. I did my testing and there was no need for me to keep that. Um, and a laptop is better because you can convert it into a desktop anytime you want. So, all right, I'm rambling here. Let me get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like on this video. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on and comment down below. What do you guys think about the Apple Studio display? Is it worth the money? Do you have one? Let me know.